Today's lecture is basically an introductory lecture on viscoelasticity, its definition, the phenomena of creep, stress relaxation, hysteresis, and the viscoelastic models uh, that are being used for simulation of viscoelastic curves. So, in general, uh, we know about two types of materials, the fluids whose nature is viscous and the solids which are being considered as elastic. So now we are going to in fact, discuss another type of materials which are called viscoelastic materials. These materials they exhibit the properties of like uh, elastic solids and uh, viscous fluids as well. So all viscous liquids they deform continuously under the influence of an applied stress. So their behavior in fact is called viscous behavior. The solids uh, deform under an applied stress or soon reach a position of equilibrium in which further deformation ceases. If the stress is removed, they recover their original shape. We say that they exhibit elastic behavior. So viscoelastic materials, they can exhibit both viscosity and elasticity depending upon the conditions. In general, polymers, they display viscoelastic properties above their glass transition temperature. what is uh, actually an elastic behavior we have gone through this type of behavior in our uh, earlier lectures so if we put a load on a metallic rod it will stretch to a certain length if we remove the load it will come to its original length immediately Here we can see another example, it's a tennis ball, so if we press it, it will compress and on removal the load, it immediately comes to its original position. So this behavior is called elastic. So, for example, we had uh, an object with height h, we applied a force f, uh, the compression or change it was delta h. So, the point at which the force was applied, the change, this delta h, it was instantaneous. We maintained the force, the deformation will remain same with the passage of time. And if at a certain instant we remove the force, there will be an instant elastic recovery. So let's consider another type of material and behavior. For example, we have a plastic rod. We apply a load on it. It will stretch. If we remove the load quickly, the rod may return to its original position. But if we leave the load on that rod for a certain period of time, the polymer chains they will slide past each other and flow to make the rod's length longer. Means with the same load, the strain will increase with the passage of time. The longer the load is applied, the more the rod will lengthen until the part of change. So, uh, this time dependent behavior, this is called viscoelastic. So, uh, let's go through some examples for our understanding. So, silly is an example, is a commonly used example of viscoelastic behavior. So, if we have a silly putty, place it into, uh, on a table in the form of a ball. If we place it, uh, there will be uh, 
if we place it on the table there will be an immediate effect of gravity on it due to which it will be like stick to that uh, desk now the force that uh, have been applied on it is gravity and there will be no change on that force means load is constant but still this celebrity will be uh, flowing and becomes flatter so it means with constant applied load its behavior is time dependent the deformation in the celebrity is time dependent so this time dependent behavior is again called viscoelastic behavior so here we were like seeing a mattress load was applied on it there was a deformation the load removed a deformation was still there and it is removing depending upon time it's not instantaneous so this behavior is again viscoelastic behavior means time dependent recovery instead of instead of instantaneous recovery as it was in case of at this slide we will review the behavior of elastic solid viscous liquors and viscoelastic materials when a constant stress is applied on them so cause is application of stress and its effect will be strain or deformation in the material so let's start with elastic material we applied we started from zero we applied an instantaneous stress we keep it constant and then we remove it so if we look at the strain response the stress is increasing the strain is increasing the stress is maximum the strain is maximum we keep the stress constant the strain is constant remove the stress and there is immediate recovery of strain so this is in fact elastic behavior what happens to liquid these are the newtonian liquids we apply the stress there is no strain we keep it constant with the passage of time the strain is increasing after a certain period of time there will be equilibrium uh, with maximum stress strain will achieve its maximum value and then it will remain remain same because after removal of stress there is no recovery in liquids so next let's go to viscoelastic materials so on viscoelastic materials if we apply stress there will be an instantaneous strain if we keep the stress constant the strain will be growing so this portion was due to elastic portion of that material this is due to viscous portion of that material as it was increasing in liquid the strain was increasing so this is increasing here if we remove the stress there will be an immediate recovery we called it instantaneous recovery and then stress will become zero but still there will be some strain which recovers with the passage of time and then there will be some permanent recovery so this is typical viscoelastic behavior under constant stress mod So in general viscoelastic behavior can be seen in two phenomena the first one is creep for example if we hang a mass by a cord like this so with the passage of time the length of this cord will increase the stress is constant but the deformation will be increasing with the passage of time for example if you 
uh, put that weight there for like one day, two day, three days with the passage of time, its length will be increasing. So we applied constant stress and the strain there will be an initial strain and then with the passage of time this strain will be increasing we remove it there will be an immediate recovery and then relaxation so this is first phenomenon means strain will be increasing when stress is constant now we will be talking about another phenomenon at constant strain so for example we have a rubber band around a newspaper for a long period of time like this we roll the newspaper put a rubber band on it so this rubber band will be applying a force on it so with the passage of time you will see that this rubber band will be loosened means the force that it, it was applying it will decrease with the passage of time this loosened behavior is called stress relaxation. So we applied a constant strain, we roll it, means we applied a strain, we give it a shape. So we applied a constant strain. So in elastic uh, materials, the value of stress or the value of force this band was applying it must remain constant but in viscoelastic materials there will be a relaxation it will loosen so this phenomena is called stress relaxation phenomena this phenomena is called creep phenomena so we see both these phenomena in viscoelastic materials so we want to see Uh, a little bit in detail the phenomena of creep so what we will be seeing for example we have a, an object with height h we want to apply a force on it for example f this force is constant and we want to check that how its height will be changing with time So we applied a constant load and we said that when we applied a load there will be an instantaneous change and as load is constant this deformation will be increasing. When a body is loaded or is stressed and the stress is held constant the body continues to deform. With time this behavior is called creepy. I have uh, gone through detail of these curves earlier I will tell you again that uh, when we apply force or stress there will be an instantaneous change then there will be a retarded deformation which is this phenomenon is called creep when we remove the force there will be an instantaneous elastic recovery this is due to elastic portion of that material and then there will be a retarded recovery which is uh, due to viscose portion of that material and there will be a permanent deformation as well next phenomena is stress relaxation if a body is deformed and deformation is kept constant elastic materials there will be stress in the body elastic behavior is like this that the stress in the body will be constant while in uh, viscoelastic materials there will be stress relaxation so when a body is deformed or strained and that deformation or strain is held constant stress in the body reduce with time this phenomena is called stress relaxation and this is uh, again an indicator of a viscoelastic material 
another very important factor for viscoelastic material is their dependence on strain rate. For example, if we load the material slowly, their behavior is generally ductile. And if we load the material quickly, the behavior of a viscoelastic material is generally st stiffer and brittle. So we will go through this video uh, showing uh, very quickly an example of uh, strain rate dependency of viscoelastic materials. I like to demonstrate this with a silly putty. This is my glitter sil silly putty. And we all know we've played with silly putty and, and we know that it will stretch and it's very ductile, isn't it? Well, that was a slow strain rate experiment that I just did. If I take the same silly putty, I haven't switched anything out, and now I deform it at a high strain rate, it's much more brittle. And if I could pull it even faster, okay, you can get to a point, I can pull it so quickly that it barely deforms before it breaks. Here is the stress and the strain curve when a viscoelastic material was subjected to load and the strain rate was fast and slow. So when the strain rate was fast, the deformation or strain is lesser, means material is more elastic. Uh, when it's slow, the strain increased. It is mainly due to addition of viscose portion into the elastic portion. When it is slow, it is more ductile, its behavior is more viscoelastic and when the strain loading rate is fast, the material is more elastic, its curvature, its stress strain curves curvature is small and the material response is more brittle and stiffer. So here is another example of a viscoelastic materials. Uh, here, uh, this example mainly it deals with uh, silicon rubber. So, we will be seeing uh, the effect of strain loading, uh, the viscoelastic behavior that the force has been removed, but the strain is there and it is uh, regaining uh, its position depending upon time. Let's go through this. Viscoelastic silicone rubber is a remarkable new material that has a stiffness that depends on time. When things happen fast, a bump, a bounce, a jump, a stride, then viscoelastic silicone rubber appears stiff and resilient. But when life slows down and the viscoelastic silicone rubber has more time, it appears soft and compliant. If you stand on viscoelastic silicone rubber, it gradually conforms to your foot. And if you put viscoelastic silicone rubber under the leg of a rocking table, it adapts to fill the gap. Viscoelastic silicone rubber is stiff and resilient if you strike it fast. But it's soft and compliant if you push on it slowly. If you're in a hurry, it's like hard rubber. If you're patient, it's much softer. Yet, despite this remarkable hard and soft behavior, viscoelastic silicone rubber always returns to its original shape when you leave it alone. Viscoelastic silicone rubber is bouncy and even when you deform it slowly into a new shape, it's still bouncy as it slowly returns to its original shape. One way to measure the stiffness of rubber is with a durometer. This device pushes on the rubber 
and sees how much that rubber resists denting. The more it resists denting, the higher the reading of the durometer and the harder the rubber. This ordinary silicone rubber resists denting pretty strongly. It's pretty hard and we get a reading of 55 units. And that reading doesn't change with the time of the measurement. It's, it's always the same value. Here's a softer rubber that resists denting less uh, effectively and so it obtains a lower reading of hardness. And that reading doesn't change with time. But when we go to a viscoelastic silicone rubber, now we get a reading that varies with time. This material is harder on short time scales and short measurements than it is on long time scales and long measurements. So you see the resistance to denting, which is being indicated by that dial, uh, gradually decreasing as the material relaxes, as time goes on, and it shows a softer and softer behavior. The time scale on which a particular viscoelastic silicone rubber shifts from hard to soft depends on its formulation. The red viscoelastic silicone rubber takes a very long time to show its softer side. It's slow to adopt the curled shape and it's slow to return to its original shape. The mint green viscoelastic silicone rubber on the other hand has a much faster response. It adopts the curled shape quickly and it returns to its original shape also quickly. Next phenomena that we are going to study is hysteresis, which is typical of uh, viscoelastic materials. So if we talk about elastic materials, within elastic lemurs, we load them, there will be a deformation, the graph is linear and if we remove the load, they will come to their original position also by following the same path. If we consider stress strain behavior for materials with plastic deformation, so initially their behavior will be uh, elastic, it may be linear or not linear. When we go into the plastic zone and the load is removed, the stress curve returns to zero level with some permanent deformation. So if we consider like a stress sustain or force displacement curve of viscoelastic materials, their curve is no more straight. It's like this. It means there is a delayed and more deformation versus the force applied in viscoelastic materials. It's increasing with the applied load and their returning or recovery cycle is not the same. Come here and there is a permanent deformation. When a body is subjected to a cyclic loading, load displacement behavior for increasing load is different than behavior for decreasing loads. The area between the curves mainly represents the energy lost. And this difference is due to the viscous portion because when we uh, reload, there is no recovery for viscous portion. So again the same curve, this is not straight but like this. So it means the deformation is slow with the application of force and is more. And this uh, increase is due to a viscous portion. We are going up, then we come down. During the recovery, there is only recovery for elastic portion. There is no recovery for viscous portion. That's why uh, on recovery, uh, it's not the same path. It's a there is a little difference. And we come here with the permanent deformation and this, uh, this the area between the two curves, it will be equal to energy dissipated or energy lost due to viscoelasticity. Here we will go through a short video.
showing the details of viscoelastic behavior in terms of subting and dash polymer. Another method of understanding a polymer's behavior is the spring and dash pot model. The spring represents the elastic behavior of the polymer. The elastic portion of the model acts as a metal and has fully recoverable strain. The dash pod represents the viscous behavior of the polymer. The viscous portion of the model acts as a fluid and has unrecoverable strain. One way to understand the spring and dash pod model is by examining the behavior of the system with a suspended load. A graph of deformation and time helps you understand the mechanics of the system. The first component of the model is a spring. When a weight is added to the spring, an immediate deformation is observed. When the weight is removed, all of the elastic deformation is recovered. The second portion of the model involves a spring and dash pot in parallel. The spring portion of the system cannot immediately deform because the viscous component slows it down. Therefore, the deformation takes place over a period of time. As the weight is removed from the system, the deformation recovery of the spring is slowed by the dash pot. The third component of the model is the dash pot. The dash pot flows while the weight is applied to the system. When the weight is removed from the system, none of the viscous component is recovered. To fully understand the model, the three components must be superimposed. When the weight is applied, the system undergoes an immediate deformation due to the spring component. The second component, with the spring and dash pot in parallel, produces a deformation over time. The viscous deformation of the third component is added to the second component. This results in a model of the behavior of the loaded system over time. When the load is removed, the initial deformation of the spring is recovered. Then the deformation of the spring and dash pot is recovered over time. The deformation of the dash pot is never recovered. The result is a permanent deformation of the system. As we have gone through this video, the viscoelastic behavior can be modeled using subtings and dashboards. If we talk about a subting, its stress and strain is related by Hooke's law. Stress will be equal to subting constant into strain. So K is called spring constant and it's equal to stiffness of the subting. So damper or dashboard is a representative of viscose behavior. So in, in dampers or in dashboards, you can take an example of a syringe. If a stress is applied, the strain, uh, resultant strain is a function of time. And if we relate stress and strain, there will be a, a constant just like a supreme constant, this constant is called damping constant. So stress will be equal to damping constant into a time dependent strain. Where you can see a derivative of strain with respect to time, or you can place a small point over epsilon, which shows that the strain is dependent on time. So, in order to model stress strain behavior there are three major models which existed first one was Maxwell model then Ken Kelvin model and the last one is standard linear so what is Maxwell model Maxwell considered that it's a thing means elastic portion in, in the viscoelastic material and the dashboard means viscose portion they are connected in series So when stress will be applied, for example, sigma stress is applied on it, there will be a deformation in dashboard as well as in spring. The deformation in the spring will be instantaneous, whereas uh, 
the deformation in the dash dashboard will be time dependent so total strain will be equal to strain in the spring plus strain in the dashboard as stress uh, which is applied is same on the both so stress in first and stress in second uh, portion will be same so sigma 1 will be equal to sigma 2 and is equal to uh, sigma so if we put the value of strain in spring and strain in dashboard uh, from the spring constant equation from the spring equation and from the damping equation so it will be uh, like this strain means total strain it will be time dependent that's why we put a point on it is equal to stress over damping constant plus stress over subtain constant so here is a small video showing schematic of maxwell model The Maxwell model is mathematically the simplest model of staticity. It models the concept creep and consists of a spring and a dash pot connected in series. The equation describing the displacement of the system with respect to time can be seen. Here the system can be seen acting under a step load. Here, a gas syringe attached to a needle diameter 0.6 mm is used as a dash pot. The needle makes it difficult for air to flow into the gas syringe. This viscous friction gives the dash pot its stiffness. In the Maxwell model, the dash pot always moves at a constant velocity. It is described by the equation displayed on the screen. Displacement is equal to the force over the viscosity multiplied by the length of time the force has been applied. An ideal would give an instant extension and then remain in a constant extended state until the force is removed. Therefore, the equation for the displacement of the spring has no time dependence. The displacement is equal to the force over the spring constant. However, in this physical model, the spring is not ideal. So when a load is applied, the spring oscillates before settling to its extended length. The components of the Maxwell model are connected in series. So the displacement of the spring and the displacement of the dash pot can simply be added together. This gives the overall displacement of the system as a function of time. This is the characteristic equation describing the Maxwell model. If we look at validation of this model in creep, relaxation and recovery step. So for creep, when the stress is applied, there will be instantaneous change in spring, which is here, and then time dependent change, but like this, in the dashboard. So it's not matching with the which was like this. Then, if we talk about recovery, the only recovery when we remove the stress, the only recovery will be in the spring and this will be instantaneous recovery like this. There will be no recovery in dashboard. So it means the curve that we were seeing, the actual curve in which there was instantaneous and then delayed recovery. So it's not present if we consider that uh, spring and dashboard, uh, they are connected. In so this model handles creep badly. It handles recovery badly, but 
if we talk about relaxation so it uh, accounts fairly well for relaxation the next model is kelvin's model or kelvin watt model this model considers that elastic and viscous portion they are connected in parallel in subtink and dashboard they are connected in parallel so when stress is applied the strain in this and this portion it will be equal so this model is constant strain model e1 means strain in subtink it will be equal to e2 uh, sorry epsilon 2 uh, strain in dashboard and it will be equal to epsilon means uh, total uh, strain in the system so the stress total stress it will be equal to stress 1 stress in the subtain plus stress 2 stress in the dashboard so if we put the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 so for spring it will be equal to spring constant into epsilon and for dashboard it will be equal to damping constant into epsilon odd which is a time dependent strain so this will be its burning equation so if we look at validation of this model as both are in parallel when we will stretch it there will be elastic strain in this but, but this strain will be slowed down will be retarded by this so this is the behavior of strain under constant stress or when the stress is applied so it's just like the curve we have seen uh, in the beginning it means this model uh, it uh, deals with it handles creep fairly well same when we remove the stress for recovery there will be a recovery in this but this will be retarded by this so this is like this and it's almost similar to recovery we have uh, seen in uh, the initial curves but there is no relaxation uh, because there is no uh, dashboard which is in series with uh, this system so uh, the handling of relaxation uh, is very bad by this model so lost model is standard linear solid model as we have seen in the video as well it was telling us about uh, viscoelastic behavior uh, when we consider spring, spring, and uh, this dashboard in, in series and in parallel. So this model is called Zener model is as well. So if we consider this one is similar to what we have seen in the video. So elastic, then dashboard, then spring, and we can have another dashboard which is after that. So it was uh, present in the in the video. So this model can represent in a couple of ways spring in series with the Kelvin model or spring in parallel with a Maxwell model. So this model it uh, handles very well creep, relaxation and recovery. 